Punta San Juan is home to the largest Peruvian breeding colony of the endangered Humboldt penguin. It is located on a beautiful peninsula on the Pacific coast of Peru. We are on the desert coast. Uh, the land is barren, like a moonscape, yet when it reaches the coast, um, there's this incredible explosion of life, and that's because of these cold ocean currents coming up from Antarctica, and cold water generally supports a larger diversity of sea life, and because of the sea life, we have the sea lions and the penguins and the Inca terns, and, um, but it's the concentration of, of all those things together in such a small spot that, for me, is just almost um, emotionally and um, mentally overwhelming but it kind of gives me a high that I can't get <laughs> in a lot of different places. Once you step for the first time in San Juan, you just fall madly in love with the place, and 30 years later, I'm still there, and although less, less closely attached to the work happening there, but I think what I'm doing now is affecting it in a more long-term way, because like, you can't just protect the land. You have to make sure that whatever's affecting it outside also is controlled. So. Encroaching human populations present many threats to Humboldt penguins and their coastal ecosystems. This is a natural gas exporting plant, so obviously a lot of large tanker ships coming in and out of the area. Potential for spills associated with that. The shanty town that we can kind of see behind us has just kind of sprung up in association with this plant. So yeah, something like probably hundreds of people that weren't even here just a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah, and with that, the you know the garbage and the pollution that the, the people bring with them, as well as increased hunting along the coastlines, increased fishing, just can be very damaging to these marine ecosystems. Increased human populations require increased food sources, which create another threat. A seemingly innocent chicken farm, for example, can become a problem. These chicken farms really line most of the coastal regions of the southern part of Peru. One thing that we're concerned about is what diseases these chickens may have or what they may be harboring, and then what risk that poses to a lot of these seabird populations, and specifically the Humboldt penguin. Penguin droppings are called guano, which dry and create great nesting habitat for the burrowing penguins. Unfortunately, guano also makes good fertilizer, and harvesting of guano for human use as fertilizer creates another threat for the penguins. The penguins have uh, traditionally used guano as a burrowing, burrowing habitat, and so they nest inside the guano, and this is one of the best habitats for them to breed. What I'm standing on right now is guano. It looks like soil, but it's actually a lot of bird feces, which is really high in nitrogen, which is a great source of fertilizer. Be careful that when you do take the guano, whatever you do is done during times when the local wildlife is not affected. Fishing is another threat to the penguin survival. Sometimes fishermen, who are often poor, use methods that aren't as penguin friendly as desired. You can't just say don't fish, because it's in a poor country like ours, you can't do that. And there's been some new um, methods of fishing recently, and they're using dynamite, just dropping dynamite into the um, ocean and everything basically gets blown up that's, that's there, including penguins. One initiative of the center is a health assessment in which our partner, the Brookfield Zoo, is deeply involved. This assessment has been instrumental in collecting baseline medical data of the Humboldt penguin population. This information will be tracked over time to identify potential threats facing them and their habitat. 
One of our main goals with this project is really to have a very proactive approach to our, our efforts here. So we're trying to gather this data to prevent any sort of potential future problems. Animales quizás podríamos aprender muchas cosas de ellos también, ¿no? So you can learn a lot. We can all learn a lot from the animals that live, uh -huh. that we share the earth with. Yeah. San Juan wouldn't be there if it hadn't been for American zoos. I mean, to have collaboration, to have the world look after such an important place like San Juan makes a lot of sense because it gives it more importance, but it helps us achieve things that we probably wouldn't be able to if it hadn't if it hadn't that, that extra attention. I think, you know, whenever you develop a conservation project, particularly when it's not in your own country, and, you know, let's face it, you know, I mean, we're, we're coming into Peru providing support um, for people here because we were asked to. I mean, we were invited um, to come here and help. So ultimately, the, the greatest um, success would be us walking away, us saying that these, these locations are safe, guano is being harvested in an ecologically friendly way, um, fisheries are being regulated, um, students are being trained to do the work that we're you know, flying thousands of miles to do when they can take a short bus ride and do it. So the success would be walking away one day and having this place you know, be safe and the animals be safe. Um, and have nothing change and it be, be the way it is now forever. The Wild Care Institute is dedicated to creating a sustainable future for wildlife and for people around the world. You can find more information about how you can help at stlzoo.org.